if you're listening to this or you're watching this, there's something inside of you that feels that you need more, that, you, that you're, you're destined for more. You wouldn't be here if you didn't feel like you were destined for more. So if that's the case, let's be very clear on the stuff that we're putting into our body and how we feel. Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial. And today we're going to be talking about the things that you consume and how they make you feel. The things that you eat, the things that you read, the things that you listen to, the people that you talk to, all of those things. The things that you consume and how it changes who you are as a person. Now, we've all heard the phrase, you are what you eat. Uh, but what exactly does that mean? And I want to dive deeper into it. And I want to talk about the choices that you make. Uh, all of the choices that you make and how important all of them are, number one, and number two, how much you actually pay attention to those choices, how intentional you are with everything you do, and how much you might actually be on autopilot and not be even paying much attention to the things that you're putting into your body. And so before we dive into it, I want to, I want to say this from the very beginning. There's absolutely no judgment in anything that I say. Um, I'm just going to tell you how I live my life and what I believe. And uh, if that resonates with you, cool. But if you don't live the same way or you do hear something that I say that's against what you do at this time, there's no judgment in anything that I say. I'm just giving you uh, my advice based off of the questions that I get asked a lot from other people. And I want to talk about the things that you put into your body. And the reason why is because because most people just consume. You know, we live in a consumer world. Besides just consuming as far as the buying, we just consume and consume and consume. We just eat all the things that we can. We drink all the things that we can. We consume, you know, everything that we can from the earth and destroy it. Like we live in a society where consumption is kind of what we're taught to do. And we don't really pay attention a lot of times to what we're putting in our body. And we don't really think into the future of what it's actually doing for us. And a lot of times, what we really base our decision off of is, as Joe Rogan likes to say, mouth pleasure. Just what tastes good is what we're going to put on our mouth. Not thinking about the future or how that might make us feel in an hour or how a lot of these things might eventually turn up into being a heart attack 30 years down the road. We just kind of consume based off of mouth pleasure. And um, the reason why I bring this up is because I had somebody ask me this question the other day of like, why are you so diligent about being healthy and the things that you eat and not drinking and, and all of this stuff? And I'm not perfect in any sort of way, so please don't think that I'm saying that. Um, I just happen to be very, very diligent on the things that I put into my body in trying to stay away from certain things that make me feel maybe not 100%. And so the reason why, if I'm being 100% honest with you, is because I feel more like I'm a receiver for information than someone who makes up information. Whether you want to say that God or the universe or whatever sends me information, I don't I think that that we all have the ability to access what you could call our higher selves, our smartest version of ourselves. And I think that the more crap that I put in my body, the less that I can get those messages or feel more in tune with who I truly am and truly should be. Now, if it sounds weird to you, I get it. I understand. But the way that I, I, I say it is these podcast episodes, these ideas, all of this stuff, I don't actually want to take credit for it. I don't take any credit for it. And the way that I see it is just I'm basically a receiver for information and I just reproduce that. That's I just get ideas and ideas come into my head. I have no idea where the hell ideas come from sometimes. But what I found is that the more healthy my mind, my body, my spirit, my emotions are, the more that I get clear messages of what I should be making videos and making podcast episodes on. So once again, there's no judgment based off of what you do. You can do whatever you want with your life. And that's the beautiful thing about being a human. I will not be one of those people that tells you what you should and should not do with yourself. Um, but the way I see it is, and someone was asking me this question, as I was talking to them, I could see a cell phone tower off in the distance. And the, the answer that I gave to them, the only thing that really clicked into my head is I was like, well, I'm looking at a cell phone tower off in the distance. And I would assume that if I took, you know, handfuls of wet concrete and just threw it at that, that cell phone tower, eventually, you know, over and over and over and over and over again, when it starts being covered in concrete, eventually that thing is not going to receive and transmit cell phone frequencies to people's cell phones the way that it could. And it's not going to be as good as it possibly could. And... And I thought to myself, you know, because 
with the food that I eat, I try to eat as much vegetarian as I possibly can. It just makes me feel better. That's the reason why I just feel better, you know, as, as the way I am throughout the day. But I also feel better as far as in my conscience. I feel better that nothing, you know, no animal had to die for me to be able to get my, my protein or my nutrients each day. So, you know, I try to do that just because I feel better. Um, the thing that I drink, I don't really drink um, much else besides water. If I do, it's usually flavored water. And then, you know, once every few months, I might have an alcoholic drink or something like that. And, uh, and so I pay attention to the food that I eat. I pay attention to the, the stuff that I drink. And I also like to pay attention to how much I sleep. Like I will not uh, get anything less than seven hours of sleep 99% of the time. And so like if I have something scheduled in the morning, sometimes if I, I'm not falling asleep or something's going on, uh, I will actually reschedule things in the morning to make sure that I get the sleep that I want. Um, and so the reason why is because I want to wake up and I so strongly believe in the mission that I'm working towards and the things that I'm doing that I want to perform at the highest level that I possibly can every single day. And I know that if I go to bed and I have, you know, just a really big hamburger or something really heavy before I go to bed, I'm going to wake up and not be as rested as I could be because my body was digesting all of that the entire night. And maybe I didn't get as much REM sleep as I wanted to. If I think about drinking alcohol, you know, I, I actually read it because I was curious. And one thing that I noticed is as I get older, the more I feel alcohol the next day, two days, three days, is that alcohol stays in your system for up to 80 hours. That's over three days. And so if I really truly believe in the mission that I'm doing and the things that I'm working for, then alcohol is going to be slowing me down. And I can feel the difference, physically feel the difference the next day. And that's just me personally, because I feel like when you um, actually start eating healthier and stop drinking as much, you feel things that are not as good for your body. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You'll feel them later on and you'll feel them the next day as well. And so uh, the, the question I have for you and the thing that I want you to be considerate of is do you pay attention to every single thing that you consume, number one, and then how you feel a couple hours after eating it, an, an hour after eating or an hour after drinking, how do you feel? Because the one thing I noticed when I was not at my healthiest is that I was eating and drinking so much crap because I have ate and drank tons of crap and food that I shouldn't have and not taking care of my body and drank a ton of alcohol. All of that stuff is that when you have a lot of crap in your body over and over and over again, normal to me was just feeling tired and having to drink two, three, four, five cups of coffee in a day in order to get through it. That was just normal for me. So feeling like shit was just kind of normal. And I didn't even realize that I was feeling like shit. But now if I go and I eat and I drink those same things, I, I immediately am like, oh my God, I don't feel good. I don't think that this was right. Like for instance, we don't really eat a whole lot of dairy. The reason why I don't eat dairy is because I get real stuffed up when I have dairy and I can feel myself actually slow down. The other day we had a gluten-free pizza and it had real cheese on it. And I literally within the next 30 minutes was like, my stomach is not right. And it was just because my stomach wasn't used to this, this foreign dairy thing coming in. And so, uh, and I love cheese too. I wish that I could eat it like crazy. Uh, I wish that it was, it was possible. And I wish that, you know, animals were treated humanely enough in order to, to be able to support the, uh, the dairy industry. But you know, in my opinion, they're not, so I don't And but once again, no judgment if you love cheese because cheese does taste amazing. But, um, you know, the, the thing that I, that I do and what I started doing is I started taking my phone and I have Evernote on my phone. I have Evernote on my computer. I have Evernote on my iPad. I have Evernote basically everywhere that I I'm working or have a, uh, you know, an actual computer or something that I work on. And anytime that something makes me feel like crap an hour after, like if I have a certain sandwich or if I have something that I eat for lunch and then an hour later, I start to get really tired and I feel like I need a nap, I'll make an Evernote and I'll put a note in it under my never eat again file. And the reason why is because if I'm in the middle of the day and I eat something for lunch and it brings me down and I feel like crap and I have to take a nap in the middle of the day, that's slowing me down from the purpose that I feel like I was put here on the earth to do. So normally what I have for lunch is a salad and it's not like some weak ass salad or just like a bunch of leaves. Like it's a, it's a freaking event, these damn salads that I eat. So it'll be like spinach, it'll be corn, it'll be black beans, it'll be, you know, uh, salt, pepper, um, olive oil, 
Uh, I'll cut up bell peppers. I'll cut up cucumbers. Just, I mean, it's like a freaking like five pound salad. Like it's not a little tiny salad. Like it's legitimate. When people come over and they have it, they're like, holy shit, this salad is insane. Right? So it's not just like, oh, I have like iceberg lettuce and I put some stuff on it. Um, so, you know, when I have that though, I don't feel tired after. And so I start paying attention to how I feel after eating something or after drinking something. It's the same thing because people keep asking me, like people know that I love coffee. Like coffee is my jam. I love that stuff. But coffee can make me feel really anxious and stressed out sometimes. And I've come to realize that coffee, even though I love it so much, just shouldn't be in my life as much as it used to be. So I don't really drink coffee that much anymore. So what I replace it with, and I get tagged literally all of the time. I love you guys. You tag me inside of your Instagram stories, drinking this yerba mate tea that I recommend. So I switched off of coffee and went to yerba mate tea, Y-E-R-B-A space M-A-T-E. Yerba mate has about as much caffeine in it as coffee does. And um, at the same time, it uh, instead of dehydrating you, it actually hydrates you. And it's actually considered one of the most nutritious plants on the planet as well. And for me, the caffeine and the way my body digests it is just way different. Like it's light, it's light years difference. Like I don't really get as much of an anxious feeling as I do whenever I drink coffee. And the other thing about it as well is the difference is, uh, for those of you guys that are watching video, not just listening on the podcast, there's a huge spike when you have coffee and then a huge drop. That's that coffee drop we know that we always get. Your mate, the way your body, your liver digests it, it goes up, there's a huge spike, and then the spike, instead of dropping, it slowly dies off over about three or four hours. So what I do is I have yerba mate. I know I'm going to get tagged in a bunch of Instagram stories of you guys doing this in the morning now. I love it. I get yerba mate, loose leaf. I make tea with it and then I put in oat milk, I put in stevia and I put in cinnamon and oh my goodness, that stuff is beautiful. It tastes amazing. My girlfriend Lauren says it tastes like Christmas and everyone who tries it is like, holy crap, this is my new thing each morning. And it still gives me the warm, fuzzy feeling of having something warm and beautiful in the morning. And then when I wake up and I feel like I've got a good amount of energy, the thing that I will do is I won't drink coffee, I won't drink yerba mate, and I'll actually drink green tea, which has a tiny bit of caffeine, like a little bit of caffeine in there, but it still gives me the feeling of that warm, you know, it's like when you have that cup of coffee or that yerba mate in the morning, it's like a warm hug from your mother in the morning. You just feel, oh my God, it feels so good, <laughs> you know? So it's like the routine of still having something warm and hot and I'll have green tea with oat milk and cinnamon and stevia in it as well. And the reason why, and the reason why I'm going through this and telling you about all this crap is because I just pay attention to how I feel. And I've noticed that, that I can't plan episodes and I can't record episodes and I can't record videos when I feel anxious. Like I literally feel anxious and anxiety from too much caffeine or just the way that my body, my, the way that my body digests certain types of caffeine. So for me, I just pay attention to how I feel versus just going through and being on autopilot and going, okay, well, today I'm going to have coffee, you know, because I have coffee every single day, which I have done for years and years and years and years. I just try to pay more attention and I keep a note of in my Evernote of how I feel after I eat certain things that don't make me feel good. So like red meat for me, it's just, it's just, it takes a lot for my body to process and most people's bodies to process. And that's why you have to have that nap and you feel like you need to, you need to sleep is because the most energy consuming thing that your body does is digestion. And so if you have a big mission in the world, but you have a freaking steak in the middle of the day, you're going to need that 2:30 nap. You know, we always talk about that two, you know, five hour energy drink talks about the 2:30 feeling where you feel like crap at 2:30. You shouldn't feel like crap at 2:30 because something that your body is supposed to have, it should digest easily and it shouldn't take away all of your energy and need to shut down your brain and shut down everything so that you need a nap. So what I'm basically saying is as you're going through your day and you're going through your life, start to be very diligent of what you put into your body. If you're listening to this or you're watching this, there's something inside of you that feels that you need more, that, you, that you're, you're destined for more. You wouldn't be here if you didn't feel like you were destined for more. So if that's the case, let's be very clear on the stuff that we're putting into our body and how we feel. If I feel sluggish after having something, I'm going to put it in my Evernote as a do not eat again. 
Now, you know, could I have it for dinner for, you know, some sort of special event? Sure. I'm not saying don't ever have again, but don't don't eat again, I mean, in the middle of the day and, and that type of stuff. So you got to think about it that way. If you're here, you have a mission. There's something, I don't know what it is, but there's something inside of you. It's like, yeah, I've got something that, some mission inside of me of lives I want to impact, things I want to do, all of this stuff. And so if that's the case, let's be very clear on, you know, the food that we're eating, the stuff that we're drinking, the, um, the stuff that we're consuming as far as the media and stuff that we read and people that we hang out with, you know, like pay attention to the media that you have, whether it's music that you listen to, whether it's the media as far as the news, whether it's the social media and scrolling through people's news feed, the stuff that you read, the books that you read, you know, uh, the people that you hang out with, the morning routine that you have, more than anything else, what I've come to put more into my life of is more intention. I try to be more intentional with everything that I do. I know that you have a mission of some sort, something inside of you that says there's more. I have something inside of me that says there's more. And it's so important to me that it's just more important to me than you know having a big steak in the middle of the day. It's more important to me than drinking alcohol and not feeling 100% like myself for the next day or a few days. And I'm okay with that. And it also motivates me to work out and try to feel better. I'm not perfect in any sort of way. And I will never say that I'm perfect because I will never be perfect because there is no such thing as perfect. I am imperfect, which makes me perfect because everybody's imperfect. We're all imperfectly imperfect. And uh, I just try to do my best. And I see this body of mine as like a receiver, like a cell phone tower. And everything that I, every time I put something crappy in it, it's just like throwing you know, really wet concrete on it. And the more wet concrete that eventually dries on it over and over and over and over again, that's not going to receive and be able to work at its highest capacity. And that's all I truly want to do is to be able to serve at my highest capacity to impact lives. And by the time I die to feel like I did everything I could. And that's really what it is for me. I'm not afraid of being judged. I'm not afraid of people talking trash about me. I'm not afraid of not being received by some people. All I'm afraid of is being on my deathbed and wishing that I could have done more or that I should have done more, but I held myself back in some sort of way. And I will not be held back by the food that I eat and the stuff that I drink. And so that's why I have the mission of consuming the stuff that I feel is best for me. And that is just my opinion. If you love it, you can take what you want from it. If you hate it, it's your journey. You can do whatever the hell that you want. And that's what's so beautiful about being a human. So if you love this episode, please share with someone that you know and love. And I'm going to leave you the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you. I love you all. And I hope that you have a beautiful day.